Ladies and gentlemen, let's read gaming to the com video. We're going to be further discussing DirectX 12 since, well, it's a pretty popular topic at the moment. And of course, we're going to be continuing our coverage of asynchronous shaders. AMD actually have weighed in on this, and we've got some exclusive comments where they explain exactly how some of this functionality works. And furthermore, we'll be going into command buffer recording as well and discussing why that's actually a very, very good thing and exactly what it is and how it functions. So without further ado, let's start. So we're going to have to take things a few steps back um, and talk about the basic architecture of a GPU for you to understand exactly why asynchronous shaders are useful and powerful. By the way, this is also an article if you want to go ahead and check it out. I do go into some details uh, a little bit more in depth, but for the sake of brevity and because I've covered some of the stuff previously, I want to keep this uh, part of the video relatively short and get onto the new shiny stuff but if you're finding yourself a little bit lost then go ahead and check the article out or if you want more sources of information so anyway continuing uh, GPUs essentially are a bunch of processes which come together to form um, a common goal so what they will do is obviously process pieces of information these uh, many processes which are uh, inside the GPU are controlled by a graphics command processor which is responsible for the graphics and asynchronous compute engines which is exclusive to AMD hardware and that is or those because there are multiple are responsible for compute desks. The biggest enemy of a GPU is quite simple it's latency it's time where the GPU is actually not processing things now there are numerous reasons this occurs but most of them can be traced back to DirectX 11 effectively the API thinks serially um, which basically means it can handle one instruction at a time I've gone much more in depth than this in the article but it has to do with context switching a context switch is basically where the GPU or the processor, the CPU, will be processing a task and then put that task on hold, well, either it's completed or it needs to switch to something else, as maybe for example at a higher priority, and then it continues a different task. And this is basically how serial processing works. The problem is continuously switching leads to quite a bit of overhead, which is where preemption comes in. Preemption does still have problems when it comes to actually switching from one task to another but rather than having an every man for himself approach in other words where tasks just get executed as and when this time there's some order in other words high priority tasks are processed first while while lower pro uh, priority tasks will be processed later now there's still however a lot of latency because essentially the GPU can still only process one thing at a time and you're still switching between those tasks and therefore latency still occurs. So what about DirectX 12 or more specifically what about asynchronous shaders? So uh, Mr. Robert Halleck from AMD uh, actually gives us a little bit of information about that. He says by interleaving these tasks across multiple threads it will shorten the overall render time. Now Asynchronous shaders utilize the um, asynchronous compute engines on the AMD GPU and what this will effectively do is rather than having a serial um, process instead multiple things can be done at the same time and it's a much much more efficient and more effective way of graphics processing. Now what about you know the actual architecture of this is it something that's particularly difficult is it very difficult to utilize well mr robert halleck has told us exclusively that a developer doesn't really need to change the way they write shaders to use as asynchronous shaders so it's relatively easy to extract the gains on amd hardware in fact it's part of the core direct x12 spec so it's not something that even needs to be specifically added to the engine if you have and support direct x12 you have it and indeed he also points out that there are already console games which are utilizing this um, AMD actually released some slides a while back which detail um, and demonstrate this now on the PC currently we've got one title on Mantle um, which uses this technology which is Thief however other uh, games which use it on the console include Infamous Second Son and uh, Robert says that this is one of the many cases where consoles are improving the performance and flexibility of the PC. 
Mr. Halleck continues his explanation by saying, and I quote, Graphics rendering tasks naturally have gaps or bubbles in the pipeline. AS fills these bubbles with compute. Instead of having to wait for graphics tasks to end to do compute work or having to pause uh, graphics work on compute, this reduces scene rendering time and increases GPU utilization by activating resources that would have been dormant in DirectX 11. So what about multi-threading? What about multi a threaded command buffer recording. So we're gonna actually explain what that is, but first we need to lay a little bit of groundwork. Once again, same thing. This is gonna be a little bit brief because we've talked about what command buffers are previously, but I just wanna give you a refresher. If you need to know a lot more information, you can go ahead and check out the article. So what is a command buffer? In a nutshell, it's commands that the game asks for the CPU to process and then it will dispatch them to the GPU in a series of instruction and draw calls. These commands will generally be executed in a very specific order and must be synchronized so the GPU and the CPU are seeing the same and corrected data. So as we've said numerous times now, processors are no longer improving how they once were and now we're definitely heading towards a multi-threaded future. I say heading, we're already there pretty much. Hi there future. So what does this mean? Well considering that let's take Intel just for a moment. Intel Skylake processors are still going to be utilizing the same architecture at least on average for the desktop as let's say the Neelum. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing how most people pronounce that. That's how I pronounce it anyway, which is, for example, i7-920. In other words, it's got four cores with hyper-threading. Um, now, there are other processes which break this uh, tradition, for example, you know, 5820K. But generally, that's just how Intel CPUs are working currently. AMD, they've got the FX range, which, of course, have definitely embraced the multi-core side of things. Um, and Zen is... At least the leaks are pointing towards eight cores on average for the uh, desktop. In fact, some of the servers are going to be up to 32 cores. Now, I don't want to get too much into the multi-threading side of things um, as an overall kind of topic. But if you were to take a look at Photoshop, WinRAR, or Excel, or any of those applications, you'll notice that for the most part, uh, recently applications scale fairly linearly, assuming the application has been coded to do so. Uh, with the number of CPU cores you've got. You can check this out by simply going into your BIOS, assuming you've got a fairly advanced BIOS, disable a couple of CPU cores, come back in, run a test of, say, you, I don't know, performing some operations in Photoshop, go ahead, restart the system, enable the CPU cores, do the same thing. You'll notice, of course, the performance is faster. Pretty obvious, right? That hasn't, however, happened with DirectX 11. There's multiple reasons behind that. We've tackled most of those previously. But effectively, it's pretty serial. It's, it's serial. In other words, it can handle and think one thing at a time. Now, this combined with another major issue in that the actual how could I put it, the actual API and driver have a very, very heavy workload on DirectX, which when you consider that this is only across one CPU core, core one is basically doing most of the work. And so that has a high time to actually complete the tasks, whereas the other cores don't really do that. Their workload is considerably lower, which is not good, obviously. So DirectX 12 fixes this in a number of different ways. Parallelism was built into the API from the ground up. And on top of that, the API and the drivers are far lighter now. This is, of course, known as, and the buzzword is, closer to the metal. Many, You know how that word was buzzed around quite a lot, especially when the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were released and everyone talked about the APIs being close to the metal and so on. But that's effectively what this is. So there's a lot less abstraction there. So... Uh, Robert Halleck, once again in an exclusive interview, said, and I quote, DirectX 11 was pretty single-threaded. There's a high overhead at that, so it makes the CPU a bottleneck for no good reason. DX12's major advancements are to widen CPU parallelism and to keep the GPU more busy uh, by an asynchronous shaders for higher FPS overall. So, out of quote, um, he also points out, that when it comes to command buffer recording, it's simply a, spe a specific feature in DirectX 12, Mantle, and Vulkan. So this has been confirmed. Obviously, that's not really super surprising that Vulkan um, is supporting this since it's 
pretty much built from the uh, mantle technologies that's been confirmed by the guys over at Kronos, so it's not like you know that's news, that it will actually allow the CPU to accept and dispatch command buffer submissions on all cores, which is really the crucial issue here. So once again, the main purpose of DirectX 12 is to get all of those CPUs to do well, all those CPU cores to do their thing. And that, my friends, is the key for DirectX 12 in terms of building better worlds and building richer environments and, of course, increasing things such as the level of detail in various objects, increasing uh, the draw distance, that's another one, and even the amount of unique objects on scene, or, for example, the amount of shadows or lights which can cast shadows and all these other different bits and bobs are really key and crucial to making a world that looks rather beautiful. Really and truthfully, latency is the key here. The longer a CPU either is required to send instructions or the longer the GPU needs to process them, in other words, the longer a frame potentially takes to draw, the lower the frame rate is going to be, or potentially you could even start dealing with frame rate variance or frame time variance, which is obviously not what we want. We want a stutter-free environment. This is particularly true when we're uh, moving towards, say, virtual reality. And virtual reality, if you've ever used it, and I obviously have, but I'm sure a lot of you have as well, virtual reality headsets are extremely sensitive to, well, latency. And so another thing, of course, that uh, GPUs eventually are going to start to um, really push towards when AMD are utilizing, for example, their Liquid VR, which one of the actual main purposes of Liquid VR is to actually reduce latency. Um, it basically acts as a middleware. And even DirectX 12 has certain functionality for cross-GPU for multiple vendors. So, for example, you can put in an Intel uh, iGP and combine that with, say, an NVIDIA GPU or an AMD GPU. And the iGP can be used to, say, process post-processing. Or it might be able to uh, even handle, let's say, the warping for virtual reality, whereas the main GPU um, can actually handle the work main workload. If you require more information on that, we did, of course, cover that very in depth the last couple of days um, at the Build conference. You can type in Build uh, DirectX 12 and that will pop up, or it's also linked in the, the article as well. Anyway, hopefully, you found this video somewhat informative. Um, so I'll see you soon. Take care, and remember, if you can like, share the video, um, you know, on Reddit or you know, Facebook or Twitter or wherever you hang about and congregate with your friends, buddies, I would greatly appreciate that. But for now, I'm going to let you all go. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video. Uh, take care, and uh, bye for now.